a brand of aggressive, intimidating football that was in absolute keeping with the character of head coach Mike Ditka. His players had to do it his way, and Ditka's way was to play it hard, aggressive, and tough on every play. They were more than tough last year. The Bears roared through the regular season and playoffs into Super Bowl 20, and they dismantled the New England Patriots in a record-shattering show of defense and offense. One team that did play the Bears tough last year is their opponent tonight, Green Bay. The last time they met, the Bears won a narrow 16-10 decision that featured plays like this. Ditka says his team is more than ready for a repeat of that kind of game tonight. We'll be very physical. We'll meet force with force. We'll play whatever way they want to play. You can bet they'll be tough as tonight the Bears play the Packers. Wisconsin tonight it's the NFL champion Chicago Bears against their longtime rival the Green Bay Packers our ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by New York Life to help you get the most out of life by Budweiser Beachwood age for that clean crisp taste this Bud's for you and by Nissan test drive the new Nissan hard body trucks at your Nissan dealer now Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and welcome to Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin, located on Lombardi Avenue. You get the idea? Tonight, we're going to watch the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears play for the 131st time. They've been going at it for a long time, and they have been hard-fought games. The Bears come in. They're 2-0 and in the young season. The Packers are 0-2, but I don't think it's too cliche to say you can throw it all out whenever these two teams meet. They really don't like each other, and that's developed over a lot of decades of playing football. Last year, the Bears only lost one game. They lost that game to Miami, and the toughest game they had outside of that game was right here at Lambeau Field, where they came in and just squeaked out a 16-10 victory over the Green Bay Packers, and there was all kinds of bitterness that came out of that game. Hard hitting, there was late hitting, there was rough play, and that could have some ramifications that will carry over into tonight. The Bears' offense could be hurt somewhat by the fact that their quarterback, Jim McMahon, is probably not going to play tonight. We say probably because we never know. We thought that in Minnesota a year ago, and he came in and won that game almost single-handedly. So they're going with young oh, Mike Tomczak, no. the second-year man out of Ohio State. And there's a look at Jim McMahon, but their offense really is Walter Payton, the legendary one, a legend really in his own time, now in his 12th year. And there is Walter, over 15,000 yards, 177 yards a week ago against Philadelphia, maybe a better than ever. But the Bears really thrive on defense. We all know that. We have household names that came out of their... Super Bowl efforts of a year ago. We have names like Dan Hampton that everyone knows. We have Steve McMichael. We have Richard Dent, Mike Singletary, and it goes on and on. And of course, they have the most legendary of all appliances in all the white goods department, the refrigerator, William Perry. They are coming in here tonight against a young Green Bay Packer team just kind of licking their chops, I think. They really want to dominate this young Green Bay Packer team, and maybe they will. I don't know whether they have intimidated this young team or not, but I think there are a lot of young Packers out there, quite frankly, would like to be not only playing against him, but also getting a few autographs from these Chicago Bears. My colleague Al 
Michaels has a full line on this young Green Bay Packer team, and a lot of them that are not going to be household names. I can tell you that as you call them tonight. Well, Forrest Gregg has uh, changed the cast of characters here, Frank. In fact, they have 14 new players. 14 of the 45 were not here at the end of last season. The Packers have been 8-8 eight and eight in each of the last three seasons, and they have begun this season on a note on which they have lost by 31-3 to three to Houston and 24-10 to New Orleans, two so-so teams. So the Packers could very well be a team in a lot of trouble. It is a team basically bereft of superstars. In fact, only one will be a household name. That's the wide receiver James Lofton. And Forrest Gregg, in his third season as the coach up here, has decided to go with the relatively untested but what he calls promising quarterback Randy Wright, the third-year man out of the University of Wisconsin. So it is sink or swim with him. But as far as the Packers are concerned in tonight's game, it's really back to the basics in terms of how do you win it? You win it two ways. Number one, you have to control the ball against the Chicago defense. Good luck. And secondly, especially in the absence of Jim McMahon tonight, you have to try to contain Walter Payton. Good luck again. Much easier said than done, obviously. And the Packers, as you know, are big favorites, or the Bears are big favorites coming into tonight's game. And a Packer victory would be the biggest upset of this young NFL season as we conclude week number three. So the Packers to kick off. Al Del Greco, who booted a 50-yard field goal last week, the longest of his career against New Orleans. And back deep, Dennis Gentry and Thomas Sanders. Gentry has already run a kickback for a touchdown this season. He did that against Cleveland in the opener the fifth year man the versatile one out of Baylor full house at Lambeau Field and they are raucous as we get underway from Green Bay and Del Greco's kick is a short one fielded at the 13 yard line by Gentry up past the 20 to the 30 and tackled at the 32 yard line dropped there by Mossy Cade and so Mike Ditka with some last moment instructions for Mike Tomzak Tom Zach wasn't drafted out of Ohio State picked up as a free agent and he started the season number three on the depth chart behind McMahon and Steve Fuller but he's in there tonight with the big men Peyton and Suey and then Galt on the outside and the great offensive line the old pro Jim Colbert the left tackle first and ten Chicago from the 33 yard line Suey and Peyton behind Tom Zach and they give it to Suey and Suey breaks a tackle behind the line and turns what would have been a loss into a minimal gain to the 34 yard line where John Anderson the left side back in number 59 makes the tackle the defense character Humphrey has won the nose tackle spot and Brown then the linebackers and Noble is developing into an outstanding linebacker Lee Lewis Cade and Flynn the Green Bay secondary second down and nine Chicago from the 34 yard line. That's Emory Moorhead in the slot to the left. And Tom Zach to put it up. Blocked at the 39 yard line. Moorhead covered on the play by Scott. Randy Scott. It'll be third down. Obviously a partisan crowd. No question it was incomplete. As we look at the Bear offense and Young. Mike Tomzak out of Ohio State. He set a lot of records passing at Ohio State, even though he wasn't drafted. We'll look again at the incompletion going to big tight end Emory Moorhead, the former Giant. As fast as he should have caught, but it wasn't. And now it's going to put Tomzak in the sure pass situation. We're going to watch a lot, I think, of Matt Suey tonight when they're in running situations. Walter Payton has been working hard in the first two games. They'd like to cut down his number of carries, so I think we'll see a lot of Matt Suey tonight. Four wide receivers in right now, and everybody into the pattern, and Tom Zach moving to his left and looking for some help and trying to get a block from Peyton and moves out to the 39-yard line. But he's shy of the first down. He was chased by Alfonso Carriker. Sounds like they just won a playoff game. Stopped them on the very first series, and it turns on this partisan crowd, and they love their football up here. They had 1,500 for a banquet last night, just celebrating the Ulsters. A lot of them were watching tonight. Tom Zach. And when I talked to Ed Hughes, the offensive coordinator this afternoon and a former teammate of mine of the Giants, says Tom Zach has a lot of 
the Jim McMahon in him. He likes to gamble. He's tough. He's got a real tough inner character. So we'll watch and see if that develops tonight. Walter Stanley stands back at his own 16-yard line, and Maury Buford, the punt for Chicago. Line drive kick, and from the 19-yard line, Stanley starts to his right. A penalty marker goes down on the near side, and he gets back to the 28-yard line. But a marker was thrown a good 60 yards away from the play on the near side at the 40. Probably the illegal block. Fred Wyant is the referee tonight. And you can see the back judge, Ben Tompkins, who made the call. And the call goes against the Packers. That's going to hurt now. What Forrest Gregg wanted to do as they back the Packers up is to try to, let's get the call. Holding, number 24, first down. Forrest Gregg did not want to get in any kind of trouble earlier in the game. Now, that's what has happened as we look at Randy Wright, the quarterback, he'll open tonight. That's what happened in the first two losses to Houston. They had to throw the football. They are not a throwing team like they have been in the past with Lynn Dickey. They want to run the ball. They lost to New Orleans by getting way behind early. If they get behind, they may as well pack it up because they will be eaten alive by this fair team. If they get behind early, that is. And right now they're backed up to their own yard line. That penalty was against Mossy Cade for a holding, and so Green Bay starts at its own 10. Against that bear defense, how would you like to be young Randy Wright in there starting inside your town? And it's Gary Ellis who takes it up to the 13-yard line, and he's pushed back by Mike Singletary. Taking a look at the Chicago defense, and the names are so familiar, and the unsung one of those four is really Steve McMichael. The great linebackers. And the secondary, and Dave Dewerson is coming off the best game of his career last week against Philadelphia and he capped it by forcing a fumble in overtime that led to the eventual game winning field goal by Kevin Butler. Second down six. Wright retreats throws over the middle and a catch is made for a first down by Lofton over the middle at the 22 yard line Reggie Phillips the corner staying with him. Of course, Greg has to like that. The first pass, he gets good protection for his quarterback, Randy Wright, against that pass rush. No blitz involved for the Bears whatsoever. They went with their straight four down line. And it's a very young offensive line. I was kidding Forrest Greg last night about it. I said, you don't know whether to coach him or burp them. And it cracked him up, I think. But they are young. They're huge, perhaps as big as Cincinnati. A couple of 300-pounders in there. But they did give Wright good protection on his first attempt goes in motion from the 22-yard line. And the handoff goes to Kenneth Davis, the rookie out of TCU. And he takes it out to the 25-yard line, stopped by Singletary. As far as the Packers are concerned, offensively with Wright, the quarterback, and there's the man who made the stop, Singletary. Eddie Lee Ivory is hurt. He's on injured reserve and is expected back in a couple of weeks. They've been going with Kenneth Davis, who was their top draft choice. He came in the second round out of TCU. They traded their first round pick away to San Diego. You know about Gary Ellis, he's been here for years, and the other man is Gary Ellerson, but he's doubtful tonight with an arch injury. Second down and seven from the 25-yard line. Right, protected, throws, and Epps was there at the 41-yard line, but he was covered on the play and couldn't hold on as Mike Richardson covered. Again, just a straight 4-3 on the part of the Bears. No blitz involved. They were not in their fame 46 as we go back to Epps, who is playing with Badly damaged rib cartilage from a week ago. Epps can fly. He's a former 10, one in the 100 meters sprinter out of TCU. And if you're a cornerback, you're going to have to respect uh, Epps. But he was double covered at the time. Richardson was over there. He was getting help from Durson. And we might see the Bears come with the blitz for the first time. They have third and long. And they, they love to bring everybody. Let's watch. Third down and seven out of the shotgun. With Epps coming in motion to the same side as Lofton. Over the middle, it's to Epps at the 26-yard line, but well shy well, of the first down as Singletary was right there. Lofton couldn't get off the line, and then Epps over the middle on third and seven, and they pick up just a couple, and Green Bay has to kick. Not a blitz in the series. Straight four down line. They have a four over, they call it, and a four under. They bring all four of them. Hampton, Dent, William Perry, and McMichael. Now, Randy Wright has had the time to throw the football, but Singletary just 
almost tore the receiver apart as he is prone to do and the pack has to punt and Singletary already has three tackles as Bracken gets it away it's a line drive kick and it's stumbled at the 40 yard line and covered at the 43 by the rookie Lou Barnes out of Oregon so Barnes recovers his own fumble each team has had the ball once each team has been forced to punt and the Bears take over at their own 43 with 10 15 to play in the first quarter in Green Bay mean offensive ends I've seen him chase defensive backs almost out of the ballpark when he was playing I played against him in the 63 championship game he came up here ready to play the same kind of ball Green Bay had played against his team last year that was late hitting and a tremendous shot against Matt Suey by Ken Stills and he is ready to give them the same kind of action he told us that very thing this morning in a meeting first and ten for Chicago from the 43 yard line and Tom Jack fumbles the football and the Packers have it Donnie Humphrey number 79 who had been alternating with Charles Martin but Forrest Gregg has given Humphrey the nose tackle job outright and there's his first dividend just pulling away from Jay Hilgenberg and Wright leaves it there you can see whether he had his foot stepped on or not and it just is right in front of Humphrey and a big break for this young offensive unit for Green Bay they'll have it at the 43 yard line and that has to spark him considerably Green Bay at the 43 yard line Humphrey's first fumble recovery in his three year NFL career and the quick toss to Davis who is stopped at the 43 yard line for no game Kenneth Davis he was the fellow who had led the resurgence at TCU and was a Heisman Trophy candidate last season then played one game and they had the scandal at TCU some of the players had been receiving payments and out they went and so Davis in effect missed his senior season but as a junior he rushed for 1600 yards with over seven yards per carry he is very fast 4-4 very quick and they think he's going to be a great one here in Green Bay on second and ten right throwing and throwing behind X who was coming over the middle and he threw it behind him as Steve McMichael put the pressure on Take a look again. Epps again with the speed. I'm surprised Phillips is playing in that tight. If he gets one on one again, they might try a fly on him because he would go blazing by Phillips. That ball thrown just a little quickly as Wright received a little bit of pressure. And there, of course, is Humphrey having just oh. made the recovery for Green Bay, the first one in his young career. Packers have Epps and Locke into the left, and Walter Stanley split to the right. Out of the shotgun on third and ten. Wright is being pressured, but gets it away and finds Davis at the 36. Has the first down inside the 30, and the rookie is out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Chased out by Singletary. Again, no blitz. Just four men coming. The four down linemen. They're in the four outside. They get a little bit of pressure up to the right. You get that from Dan Hampton. The pass is there underneath, and you get it to a man who can run. He'll put take a six or seven yard pass as Davis did and turn it into a big gainer and a first down and Green Bay's youngsters have got to be feeling awfully good about themselves and they could really give themselves a big spark here in the early going the Packers in two games this season have scored only one touchdown first and ten Green Bay at the Chicago 25 no score 920 to go in the first quarter right rolling and hitting Davis again inside the 15 and Davis down the sideline and out of bounds he stepped out at the 11 looks so easy doesn't it not Super Bowl 20 let's take a look at it again again no blitz four down linemen coming nobody picking up with just a 4-3 you ought to be able to get better coverage on Davis it should have been a linebacker at least up there deep was Lofton so perhaps Otis Wilson should have been out there again you cannot speculate too much because the Bears in their defensive scheme of things they do a lot of things other people don't do so you better be careful who you're labeling but somebody should have been close because there was no blitz first and ten Green Bay from the 11 Davis and Ellis are the running backs Ellis starts to slip regains his balance and gets to the nine yard line stopped there by Otis Wilson Gary Ellis and that is the way he pronounces it even though he spells it 
G-E-R-R-Y. It's Gary Ellis, and he's been here for seven years now. Out of Missouri, originally selected by the Rams, released by them before he ever played in the game in L.A., picked up by Green Bay, and he's had a, a decent career for the Packers. Second and eight at the nine. Bears again with a standard 4-3 look. With a corner, and he's inbounds at the two. Philip Epps. Well thrown ball. First time the Bears brought Wilson over in the weak side. You saw it at the bottom of your screen. They brought him in to deal with Dan Hampton. Wright was looking right at him. There he is, 55, but he had plenty of time to get it to Epps, who was beating Reggie Phillips, and it's tough to beat cornerbacks on a square out when you get down close to the goal line because that cornerback because of the back of the end zone can play you so much tighter but again Phillips respecting the speed of Epps who might have taken it in laid off and the first down at the two yard line it's third down third down and one third and one third for down the first. two for the touchdown as they give it to Davis Davis slips down back at the four yard line Gary Fensick came up to get credit for the tackle and so the Packers who had it third and one lose a couple and in comes the field goal unit got the block tried to get back into the opening it would have been closed when he got there you can't run at that square if you're going to take it off tackle down there not in close to the goal line because the pursuit of the Bears any good football team is just too fast for you there's been a lot of rain up here but the field was covered until a couple of hours before game time Al Del Greco from the 12 yard line, a 22 yard attempt. Don Bracken to hold, and the kick is good. So they cash in after the Mike Tomzak fumble. The Packers go down and pick up three, and Green Bay has the lead with 7.45 to go in the opening period. This is the. Mark Cannon's snap was a little low, and a good job done here by the punter, Don Bracken, to get the ball down. That'll shake a field goal kick or two. As you can see, the grass a little high, and it will probably limit the distance of any field goal attempts tonight playing on the natural surface. The tall grass does shorten up the distance you can go with the place kicker. Gentry and Sanders back to receive. Green Bay on top, 3-0. A bouncing kick. Juggle picked up by Gentry back at the 3, to the 10, to the outside, to the 20. Gentry, who ran one all the way back in game one to midfield and down at the 45-yard line. Good run back. John Sullivan, the reserve defensive back, gets credit for the tackle. A lot of hype coming into this one. It's been a week of dueling coaches, Ditka and Greg. I don't dislike Mike, and I don't think he dislikes me. You know, we see each other at the league meetings and, uh, and things like that, and we... Uh, converse and uh, I don't you know I don't think there's any dislike here at all I'm a friend I, I, I never said I didn't like Forrest I said what I didn't like was what happened last year if you guys heard me I don't know how he feels about me but uh, I don't dislike him the coach didn't throw one punch out there the coach didn't do one thing wrong I don't dislike him <laughs> in fact I like him Dick and Greg from the 46-yard line now, Chicago is Peyton. Picks up a gain of one as Carricker makes the tackle. People forget Frank Ditka and Greg were teammates briefly in 1971. Forrest wrapped up his career with one season at Dallas, and Ditka was in his second year. More of the Landry connection. He has six head coaches around the league, including these two, Greg and Mike. And, of course, the defensive coordinator, for Green Bay, Dick Modulescu played for Landry with the Giants under Landry. Offensive coordinator with the Bears. The coach under Tom Landry and also played under Tom Landry. If you saw the penalty flag, by the way, on Gentry's run back, the penalty against the Packers obviously declined. Second down and nine from the 45-yard line. And Matt Suey takes it straight ahead. Picks up four. A lot of the Packer and Bear alumni in town. And uh, what would an alumni gathering be without that man? You're talking Green Bay, you're talking Paul Horning, and, of course, Jimmy Taylor, he was here. Ray Nitschke was here. Paul Horning was given his Hall of Fame ring as part of the kickoff tonight. Legendary one who still holds the 
points for a season record in the NFL when he was scoring touchdowns and kicking field goals and extra points. Third down and four. Chicago at the Packer 41-yard line. Tom Zack out of the shotgun, hands the ball to the versatile one, Gentry, and he takes it inside the 35, and a first down. Gentry, who has backed up Peyton, who's been used as a wide receiver, who runs back kicks. Valuable man. They bring him from the slot position back into the backfield. They go with the draw play, and indeed he is, and particularly since Dennis McKinnon was hurt in the Super Bowl, he has not been able to come back. They needed the wide receiver, and we are looking at an injured Green Bay Packer down on the field. Injured players Ken Stills. Really good uh, microwave pop. Packers comes off the field shaken. Top of your screen number 29 as he takes a shot at Gentry. I think he just caught the knee on the head because it did appear as if he had hurt his left shoulder but when he came off the field it looked like he might have had a slight concussion. We'll get a detailed report from the sideline. Bears have it first and 10 at the Green Bay 32. 3 0 Green Bay, 524 to go in the first period. And Tom Zach to Moorhead, who makes a juggling catch. And he picks up about six as Mossy Cade was covering on the plate. Henry Moorhead, a lot of years with the Giants before he went out to Denver and has now been with the Bears for five years. Not a big tight end. Doesn't give you the great play. He's a good blocker, but he doesn't give you the size for that some of the bigger tight ends will give you. That's what I love about him because announcers are always saying the pass to the big tight end as if that's the name of the position, big tight end. He's just a medium size. Second down and five from the 27. Peyton <laughs> slithering his way and picks up the first as he takes it to the 21 yard line. Peyton has made a career playing against Green Bay as 13 100 yard games against Green Bay 17 touchdowns over his 11 years the most remarkable thing about Peyton to me is not the obvious skill that he has the great strength he blocks 100 percent on every play he, whether he's carrying the ball or not he does it all is the fact that somehow at about 200 pounds he has missed one game in his entire career I played running back for nine years it hurts you don't find many of them that go all the way 12 years and only miss one game. They put Suey in motion. Peyton again takes it to the 18-yard line. He's had some great days against a lot of teams, but in particular against Green Bay. He's averaged 113 yards per game in his career against the Packers. He's faced them 20 times. Had one game now a few years ago, 77. He had a 205-yard game here against the Packers. And, of course, that tied... A record for backs against Green Bay that was, that was now co-held with Gail Sayers. So in motion again as they show the same look on second down and six and they pitch it to Peyton who tries to cut back inside and runs into his own man at the 17 yard line. So it'll be third down and a long four coming up with 348 to go in the period. Green Bay defensive team has fine linebacking. You saw a little bit of an example of it there. John Anderson real study over on the left side. They like the way Brian Noble is coming on, number 91. Dorsey and Scott in the middle. They're young, like their offensive team. But they are much further along than the offensive team. Lou Barnes and Keith Ortego are in the game. Split wide on third down. Call a third and five from the 17. Out of the shotgun. Tom Zack gets pressure, and it's off the fingertips of Peyton. Would not have been close to a first down anyway. Tom Flynn covering, and so Butler and the field goal unit come in. You know, if you change uniforms, it looked like uh, the right teams were out there playing. The Bears have been going strictly with their four-man down linemen. The Packers have been looking like the Bears' 46 defense, bringing uh, defensive backs and linebackers. They're just in the wrong uniforms. Maybe we have this backwards. Kevin Butler had a few things backwards last week. Four missed field goals, but he made two, including the game winner. 35-yard attempt from the 25-yard line to try to tie the game. And he does. So Butler gets credit for what is officially a 34-yard field goal. And in Chicago, to see Jim McMahon tonight? Probably not. 
The Bears get down by nine, we will, Al. <laughs> little deja vu. You remember the game last year, Frank. They Third said, week of the season at Minnesota. He wasn't going to play, right? They said he was a disaster quarterback. The Bears got down by nine. He came in through quick, three quick touchdown passes, and that game is history. Game tied 3-3. Kevin Butler to kick off. Walter Stanley is back deep, but it's an angled kick and out of bounds, and they'll do it again. 3-0-3 left in the first quarter so the Green Bay Packers tied with the Bears interestingly Chicago has trailed in each of its games this season they trailed on opening day against Cleveland and eventually won 41 31 fell behind to Philadelphia 3 nothing and came back to win that one they aren't where they left off a year ago as we look at the internationally renowned William Perry. And I say that having been in London when Chicago played Dallas and people were walking all over Walter Payton to take a look at this refrigerator. <laughs> and he's a lot to look at. But this defensive unit is not what they left off at the end of the season with whatsoever. They know that. They coming into tonight are 11th overall in the league and yardage given up. 7th against a rush, 17th against a pass, and even Mike Ditka will tell you that that he feels they are starting to come around. From the 30, Stanley Fields at the 11. Reverses his field to the 30, and he's angled out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Kevin Butler was over there to prevent any further advance, and it's a first down at the 37. You take another look. Stanley finds nothing happening there, breaks it out to the left. He has a lot of speed, might possibly have broken this back into the middle, but carries it out for a good game to the 38 and makes something out of nothing. He was way back around the 18-yard line and nifty return by the little one. First and 10, Green Bay from the Packer 38-yard line. And Jesse Clark is in the game as the fullback. Fakes to Davis, going deep for Lofton, who's out in front. No, Lofton was out of bounds. He ran by Reggie Phillips, but he was out of bounds. I think Reggie Phillips is going to be the designated defensive back we're going to pick on tonight. They've been coming back over to Reggie Phillips several times now. Lofton had him beat. Had Wright led that inside, it would have been a quick six points. And you kind of wonder, and again, there was a quarterback they've had here over the past few years. As you can see, well out of bounds. Then Dickey is probably the best long passer in the game. They released him earlier in the season. He is somewhere around. I don't believe he's with any teams. But it was one of Forrest Gregg's move, moves to make this team in his own character. And that's exactly what he's done. Second and 10 from the 38-yard line. And the pass is to Epps. At the 49. He's ruled in bounds. And the Packers have a first down. Singletary was over there questioning that, but he was not very violent in his questioning, so he probably got them both in down. Durson was up there trying to cover. Epps, very nifty. There's one. All you have to do is touch it. He gets it down. Nice job. Concentrating first on the ball, and Epps is not that tall, 5'9". Comes down with the football, and still the concentration holds, and he gets the completion. Wright is off to a good start. He's six out of nine for 63 yards. The ball is at the 49-yard line, first and ten. Across the 50 goes Kenneth Davis, picking up a couple. And that's all academic on the part of Otis Wilson as the play had been whistled in. The great one taking a break. The absolute best at what he has done over the years, and he has done it with such grace as a human being. You talk to Walter Payton, you would very quiet, and yet you would go out on a football field with him, and he is something of a marvel. Respected by everyone in this game, not only in his own team, but all around the league. Second and eight. Epps in motion. Richardson staying with him defensively. 
And right throwing complete to the 42-yard line. The catch made by Ed West, the tight end. And a first down for Green Bay. That time, a little deal on the defensive part of the Bears. They bring one wide linebacker, and they deal with McMichael, and they try to cover west of Otis Wilson. And uh, Wilson couldn't stay with him, and he gets help from Dorison, but again, it's a pickup for a first down. And the Green Bay offensive line, which is huge but very young, thus far is holding up very well against the Bears, although the Bears really haven't come with their more sophisticated tie blitzes. Green Bay at the Chicago 40-yard line, moving impressively, and it's Davis. Nice little stutter step and turns what would have been no gain into a pickup of about four, and he thinks he should have had more. Kenneth Davis at a TCU, and he was TCU's first All-America since Bob Lilly. Second down and six at the 36-yard line. He's also the Packers' first genuine breakaway back that they've had in a lot of years. He has the speed to take it all the way. He had a 67-yard touchdown run in preseason. Davis the tailback and Clark is the fullback with Epps to the left and Loft and split to the right. Randy Wright stepping up, going for Lofton and threw it behind him. Lofton was free for the moment. Had beaten Mike Richardson, but the pass was a little short and also a little behind him. And it'll be third down and six. Let's take a look again, reverse angle. Again, the Bears dealt again with their tackle. McMichael dealing on the outside with Dan Hampton. Lofton was there. Ball underthrown and thrown behind him. And you're not going to get that many opportunities. Now, thus far, Randy White has missed Lofton twice for what could have been scores. Now, Stanley's in the game. He's wide to the right. Epps and Lofton are split to the left out of the shotgun on third down and six. Right throwing and falling down was the intended receiver Walter Stanley now we've been talking about the rain they've had here and a little altercation just a tiny one well I guess it's not a tiny one when Perry's involved but you get my drift he might step on you in any event the field is a little slippery even though it's been covered covered by a tarp and it's in evidence here in the first quarter and especially so on that play the clock is now stopped with 13 seconds, and they are out of Del Greco's field goal range, and so Bracken, at least for the moment, will line up in punt formation. That's Barnes back at the 10-yard line. If indeed they do punt, and it appears they will now, he'll try to angle it. And it's a high kick that bounces inside the 10 and takes a great Green Bay bounce. He doesn't want it back. As if he had it on remote control. He had that up there for about 4.5, maybe even more. That is coverage down inside the five-yard line. No way that could have got into the end zone for a touchback. That was a brilliant punt. And we have three seconds to go in the period. So Tom Jack comes back in. Green Bay staying with Chicago, 3-3. And they back the Bears up to their own five-yard line. Calvin Thomas is in the game in the backfield now. Thomas along with Peyton and Reitman is also there. And they throw on first down and the catch is made by Gould to give him a little bit more breathing room. Tim Lewis covers on the play and that's the final play of the first quarter. Little expression of confidence on the part of Ed Hughes out here at the end of the first quarter. Our ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Nissan. Test drive the new Nissan hard body trucks at your Nissan dealer now. And while we were away, Al Ditka was quite exercised and having a kind of a verbal chewing out of Mike Tomczak, his quarterback. It was a strange pass and a gambling pass that he made and the type that is picked off and run back for a touchdown quite often but he got away with it for a six yard gain second down four as we start the second quarter from the 12 yard line and it's Thomas taking it out to the 16 Calvin Thomas the backup running back and again a little skirmish still a lot of bitterness over last year's game when there was so much late hitting here particularly the one blow stills against Matt Suey as 
literally Matsui appeared to be on the way back to the huddle. Kind of an uneventful, uneventful first quarter. The thing that is eventful about it is the fact that the young Green Bay offensive line has done a fine job against the Bears defense, albeit the Bears are not coming with a lot of their more sophisticated maneuvers. Chicago at its own 16-yard line. First and 10. Early second quarter. Game tied 3-3. Second and ten. John Dorsey, number 99, who is replacing George Cumby at a linebacker spot. The refrigerator took care of Cumby, shuffled him off to Buffalo. <laughs> Cumby was the man who paid the price on a couple of Perry's blocks last year. And John Dorsey taking over. He was also the man who was beaten on the pass reception for a touchdown here in Green Bay. Second and nine from the 16 yard line. Peyton to the 20 and out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Picks up six. Frank mentioned the play last year involving Stills, who came out of the game. He had his bell rung earlier. And Suey, and here it was, going back to last November 3rd. Peyton will be stopped on a short gainer. Now look at the right of your screen and then watch to the left of your screen. Here comes Stills. Now Suey was just standing there at number 26, as I mentioned earlier, almost on the way back to the huddle. And that's the kind of game we had a year ago here in the second meeting of the year. The Bears won 16 to 10, but it left a lot of bitterness that has already had some ramifications, I think, this evening because several scuffles have already broken up. Third down and four from the 22-yard line with Moorhead going in motion. And Peyton stopped for no gain. And the Bears will have to kick as Donnie Humphrey and Randy Scott converge on the tackle. And they were talking about, and Peyton is a little angry as he gets up and then winds up helping one of the Packers to his feet, number 79, Donnie Humphrey. Bears are getting themselves into a dogfight. Green Bay team a very young team with 10 rookies on it they all of a sudden uh, not showing a whole lot of respect meanwhile the crowd very much into it and there was a lot of talk about how apathetic the Green Bay crowd was on opening day here when they were bombed by Houston 31 to 3 as Buford's kick is taken to the 29 by Stanley Stanley trying to turn the corner Stanley to the 40 the 50 Stanley inside the 35-yard line. Stanley cutting back, and Stanley had stayed inbounds, and he's in there. But there's a marker down back at the 32-yard line, a penalty marker back at the 32 while the Packers celebrate. Beautiful run. That's how you have to run a punt back. Let's see what the call will be. It looks like they're going to bring it back. Yes, they are. Brilliant run, though. He set, set it up perfectly, looked to the right, got behind the picket line, and took it all the way. And Buford now is all, he's getting a little of Ditka's wrath. Mike is visibly ups upset about this game, the way it's going thus far. Meanwhile, somebody's going to get Greg's wrath. Let's see who the calls are. block in the back, number 30. That's Paul Ott Carruth running back out of Alabama, recently signed by the Packers. See if he can pick him up, number 30. Stanley with a quick look to the right. That sets up the picket line. There it is right there. Hardly a contact, but you can't do it. Referee right on top of the official was. Beautiful run, though. Watch him break it back against the grain right here. Mm. Fine run back. He put on a fine run back a while ago on a kickoff return. And so that backs Green Bay up to its own 19, 12-28 to play in the half. We're tied 3-3 in 10 of the last dozen games between these two teams. As you see, decided by seven points or less. And last year, the Bears losing only the one game to Miami, and their closest margin of victory was the 16-10 win over Green Bay. From the 19-yard line, it's Kenneth Davis taking it straight ahead for a gain of two. And it'll be second down at eight. And a week from tonight, 
You mean there's no Thursday this week? That's right. Next Monday, it'll be Dallas against St. Louis from Bush Stadium. We've worn them out, haven't we? I guess. We outlasted the viewers, I think, in this <laughs> Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday. Dallas coming off a very tough loss to Atlanta. Atlanta, for real. And the Cardinals winning the statistical battle yesterday at Buffalo, but losing 17-10. Illegal motion, declined, second down. Bears take the play and the down, so it'll be second down and eight. Green Bay from its own 21, 12 18 to go, first half, game time 3 3. Bears 46 defense has a little different look this year. They are keeping one man deep in the secondary, that's Gary Finzik. This is Davis. Davis still effective after a gain of one. Didn't quite know how to read Ed West's block that time. And Gary Fensick makes the tackle. They're so strong. McMichael and Hampton stringing it out, stringing it out. And Fensick, the all-time leading tackler back there, does his thing coming up to the outside. But that was a different look of the 46 defense that the Bears have as opposed to what Buddy Ryan built over the years. They Maybe they're changing just for color. I don't know. But Fensick is always going to be deep on it. They don't have the eight men up at the line of scrimmage anymore. But they still do the same things out of it. Third down and nine from the 20-yard line. There they are. Randy Wright from the shotgun, and it's dropped at the 23-yard line. In Davis's hands and out of him. Singletary was there anyway. They would have been short of the first down had the tackle been made, and Green Bay will kick. Classy football player, Mike Singletary. He'll play it as hard as anyone will ever play this game, but he does not take the cheap shot here. And he literally could have. He could have said that, well, he looked like he had possession of it, and he let up on Ken Davis. But that's the kind of football player Singletary is. A great one, but a lot of style with it. Don Bracken standing back at his own five, and Lou Barnes, the rookie from Oregon, at the 45. Packers nearly jump, and in fact they did because a flag goes down as it's fielded by Barnes at the 35-yard line, and Barnes gets back to the 43. So one of the outside men for Green Bay began to jump and couldn't get back, apparently, as you look at Singletary on the far side. He's the leader of that defense, calls the defenses. Emotional, yes he is, but also he has total presence when he's out there. And illegal motion is the call against the Packers. Let's see if the Bears want to play. It's their option right now at the 43. There it is, the regular season, as you can see. The Bears through the years with 14 more victories. And here at Green Bay, this is the 61st meeting, and they're dead even, 28, 28, and 4. Legendary names when you think back. Bulldog Turner for the Bears. You got Don Hudson. Illegal motion, number 27. Fourth down. A lot of ghosts roaming around this city, and they really get turned on with their football. Of course, the great years when Vince Lombardi was coaching here, the five NFL champions he produced, the first two Super Bowl winners. They are still legendary and folk heroes here in Green Bay. Gary Hayes was the man charged with the illegal motion call. The Bears have opted to take a chance here. Figure they can start in better position than their own 43. And so Bracken will kick again. Barnes is standing at the 50. High snap, and Bracken comes down Ooh. with it, hesitates, and then gets it away. And it's fielded back at the 49 by Barnes. And Barnes returns it to the 47. So they did the right thing by taking the penalty, as it turns out, yeah, because they'll start at the 47 of the Green Bay Packers. 10.52 to play in the first half. We're tied at three. Man, you never know. We asked him if he was going to go in. He said no, but they told us a year ago up in Minnesota that he was not going to play. Well, that he was a disaster quarterback. They got down by nine. They brought him in. Three touchdown passes later. Minnesota was eliminated. And don't rule out Steve Fuller. He was the backup for McMahon when he was hurt last year and in 1984. Meanwhile, the Bears have it at the Green Bay 47-yard line. First and 10, game tied 3-3. And on a reverse, it's Gold coming around this way, and he's going to fake the throw and then tackle at the 43-yard line. He had Gentry so wide open, and he didn't feel he could get it off. That was six points if he could have just laid it up and let Gentry run even anywhere near it. 
Anderson in on the tackle. Galt, no stranger to running the ball. It's the third time he's carried this year. He had 48 yards on his first two carries. Willie right here now pulls it down, and oh, he wanted to throw that ball, and he had time to throw it. But he even got it down there. Gentry was wide open. It would have been a quick six. And he was close to the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. Ball at the 43-yard line. Neil Anderson makes his first NFL carry. He is the number one draft choice. The Bears picking him at the end of the first round. He did not see any action in the first two games this season. But Neil Anderson, who reported late, and the man who may eventually someday be the successor to Peyton, who knows, sees his first NFL action. Third down, a short four at the 40-yard line. Peyton on a sweep. Picks up the first down, vintage Peyton, takes it to the 36-yard line. Looked like nothing was there. He got the block from Bortz and powers forward and picks up the first down. Let's take a look at the left guard, Bortz, number 62. He gets the block right behind him is Tom Thayer. Peyton just got a little close to Thayer. He got on top of him, couldn't get to the outside, or that could have been a big one. But who did the man they, go, the man they go to when they need it and have to have it is Walter Payton. He's getting kind of light duty thus far tonight. And I think that's by design. Mike Ditka said we'd like to cut his carries down to about 20, 22, 23 times. And he's been going way over that in the first two games. First and 10 Chicago from the 35-yard line. Tom Zack throws over the middle, and it's complete at the 20-yard line to Emory Moorhead. So he gets to the tight end for a gain of 15, and the Bears on the move, first and 10 at the 20. Walter Payton will do it all for you. Slips there. Again, we've been watching the slip all evening. Couldn't get back to the inside to get the good block, and Tom Zack again underthrows, but Moorhead goes down and digs it out and gets the first down at the 20. Now, Tom Zack has been throwing low on several occasions. I'd be a little excited to be in there replacing Jim McMahon, the world champion Bears. Thomas in motion from the 20-yard line. Tom Zach throwing, and at Beautiful. the two-yard line, Thomas makes the catch. Nice catch as he had to reach back. Calvin Thomas making his first catch of the season. It wasn't pretty, but he got it there. Tom Zach again with a lot of time. He's kind of not stepping into the pass, but stepping to the left and throwing with all the arm rather than the body. And he gets it behind Thomas. He makes a terrific catch. Meanwhile, Perry has come into the game, as you might suspect, at the two-yard line. It'll be Perry and Peyton when they break the huddle. There he is, the in there to play guard. They love it here. He can carry it, but they like to have him leave Walter. And they send Moorhead that way, too. You know, the defense has no chance. You've got Perry, and you've got Moorhead on the left side of that line, and you've got Peyton carrying the ball, and Chicago has the lead. They did not need the appliance. Mm. Gaping hole, Bortz, Hilgenberg over on the left side. You've got Bortz and Colbert. And Hilgenberg in the middle, and Perry and Moorhead, and Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> Just another touchdown as the legend grows, the legend of Walter Peyton. Butler for the extra point, 6.55 to go in the half. Remember when they said, would he ever break Jim Brown's record? Well, he's almost 3,000 yards past it now. He's obliterated it. And he's not close to being finished. Walter Payton takes it in for the touchdown, and the Chicago Bears have the lead. And Moore in third place in that category. Another look at Payton's touchdown as the Bears lead the Packers by seven. William Perry out of Clemson with the nickname that's made him the international celebrity. He's still looking for his first carry of the season, by the way. 
Walter just got his 101st rushing touchdown. He's only five behind the all-time leader now, Jim Brown. That category as he continues to attack the NFL record book. Butler's kick is taken by Stanley at the three and chopped down at the 17. <laughs> well, the legend of the refrigerator keeps on growing and growing. Here's a look at what's taken place at the Bears training camp. Can you walk with the fridge? All right. Yeah. Walk with the fridge, Reggie. These years, it's the baby sis. A rough tough baby and a cuddly kid. Three years, oh, 85 pounds. You better watch out or he'll knock you down. Uh, I'm not too fresh. <laughs> here, it's the baby sis. A rough tough baby and a cuddly kid. Three years, oh, 85 pounds. Ah, uh, the Chicago Bears in the baby fridge. As Green Bay from the 18-yard line. Lofton takes Wright's pass over the middle and takes it out to the 38-yard line for a gain of 20. Dan Hampton popped right, and Wright is down back at the 8-yard line. They're tough on quarterbacks. Dan Hampton had a free shot on Randy Wright. You had to admire Randy Wright staying in there because he knew he was going to get popped, and he really did. The backup quarterback is Vince Ferragamo. We talked about Dickey before. He's gone. Jim Zorn is gone. There is Ferragamo. They drafted Robbie Bosco, but he's on injured reserve with tendonitis in his shoulder. Ferragamo's the only other quarterback, and here's Hampton coming in to nail right. That's that little deal they've been doing all night. They have not been using a lot of blitzing. They send McMichael to the outside. Hampton steps around him, and the little deal they make made that time had Hampton wide open, and Wright is very slow reacting from this. Looking at his right hand, and I think he also might have had the wind knocked out of him. He made his first pro start as a rookie two years ago against the Bears in that game. He suffered a knee injury that eventually required surgery the following day. Let's take a look at it once again over on the left side. McMichael will go to the outside, and Hampton will come to his inside. And right, you have to admire him standing in there because he was looking right at Hampton. Took the shot, Hampton tried to avoid any further damage, but he gave him a tremendous shot, and it could have been the hand, or it could have been something to the arm that is setting the hand to tingling. But here comes Vince Farragamo. They picked him up recently. He led the Rams to the Super Bowl back in 79. Then he went off to Montreal for a while. He came back a year later, a couple of years later, went up to Buffalo and signed at Green Bay late last year as a free agent. And Ferragamo with the Packers first and 10 at the 38-yard line, 6-13 to play in the half. Chicago ahead by seven, and they'll keep it on the ground, and it's Gary Ellerson who takes it out to the 49-yard line. He was questionable tonight because of an arch problem. Gary Fensick makes the tackle, but Ellerson is in there, second year back out of Wisconsin. There it is again. I think they just go with the draw play the, about the easiest play a quarterback can maneuver because Farragamo did not have even an opportunity to warm up on the sidelines at all before they took Randy right out so they come with the draw play get Farragamo a little feel of the game but it's a tough situation to come into against the Bears would not be surprised to see the Bears now get into a lot of blitzing Farragamo's not played that much he was both right and Farragamo had a tough time last week so Ellerson to the 46 yard line last week the Saints intercepted seven passes. Wright was picked off five times, and Ferragamo, while he was in the game, with Wright. two interceptions, and Wright is on his way back, but trotting under his own power back to the Packer locker room. We'll try to get a, a word, a definitive word on the injury to Wright, who has just gone into the locker room with one of the trainers. Second down, four. Green Bay at the Chicago 45-yard line. Ferragamo to throw. Steps up, throws. Catch made at the 26-yard line by Walter Stanley. And he was covered very well on the play by Dave Dewerson. Dewerson was there, but Stanley with concentration pulls it in first down. As I thought, linebackers coming for the Bears against a fresh quarterback, but good protection for Ferragamo by that offensive line. Walter Stanley coming down with it, but Ferragamo very cool and very confident behind that huge offensive line. 
Green Bay first and 10 at the 25 yard line four minutes and seven seconds. Doesn't it look odd to see a Green Bay player wear number five and it not be Horning? Well they've retired Paul's number sort of. But Ferragamo wearing the number Horning made famous in Green Bay. They're running out of numbers up here. Ellison cuts it back and picks up three. Hey, you can't run like that against the Bears. You hesitate back there in the backfield. Anything that is going laterally, you better turn it on or you're going to get nailed. They just pursue too quickly. So Ferragamo given Horning's old number. So even though it's, it's odd here, even though they retire the number, they still keep the jerseys in circulation. Think what Steinbrenner could do with that. <laughs> could have a ceremony every three days. Eric Amo for his NFL career, a little over 56%, 65 touchdowns. And Ferragamo has to take a timeout. So even though he appeared to be uh, very much in sync and getting the feel of the game and leading them on a nice drive here, he has to take a timeout. And there it is, the Rams to the Super Bowl, then up to Montreal and back to L.A., then to Buffalo and to Green Bay. And Forrest Greg saying that... Uh, Randy Wright is his man of the future. He was going to go with Wright and Ferragamo as the backup, but he has no option here in the latter stages of the second quarter. Ferragamo had a great couple of years with the Rams in 78, and he became a replacement starter there, and in 79 took them all the way to the Super Bowl when they lost against Pittsburgh. But when you change quarterbacks in the game, a lot of things happen. The cadence is different. You tend to have offsides. You saw what happened a moment ago. Ferragamo slow getting out of the huddle. 30-second clock was counting down. He had to take a timeout, waste one, if you will, or they would have had a five-yard penalty. The game's on Saturday. Notre Dame, the best winless team in the country, I suppose, oh. at this point. Two tough losses taking on Purdue or Tennessee against Auburn. College football today coverage begins at 3 o'clock Eastern. Noon on the West Coast, Saturday. What See do you they... say? Don't write us off. Well, I wouldn't write them off. He makes that number look small, doesn't he? Like a double door fridge. The Bears, savor that for a second. 78 drives that the opponents have started at or inside their own 20. They have not given up a touchdown. That goes back to the third week of the 1985 season. This drive started at the Green Bay 18. On second and six, Ferragamo gets sacked, loses the football at the 31-yard line. Richard Dent. And Dent had him in the grasp. Dan has been slow coming around. We'll look at it from the reverse angle. You'll see Dent, number 95, reaches way around. Now, he's going to get the sack if he can with the left hand, but he is very conscious and aware that Ferragamo's holding that ball low. He pops it around, knocks it loose, and the loss is back to the 29-yard line, and that could stretch out any type of a field goal attempt we have. Meanwhile, yeah. Wright is back out on the sidelines throwing, and as it turns out, he was not in the grass, and Alan Vinegrad recovers the fumble but it's third down and 14 now Green Bay at the 29 Ferragamo from the shotgun for the first time tonight looking for Lofton incomplete blitz Singletary Ferragamo knew he had to release it he had to release it before Lofton was able to break open and that's what the Bears do to you the rushes and the hurries that's where they kill you not on the sacks and they get a tremendous amount of sacks but they pressure you Ferragamo saw the man coming and that man was Dan Hampton. He knew he was going to get to him unless he released it. He let it fly. And now that move of Richard Dent, the play before this, has made the field goal attempt one of about, what? 46. 46 yards. Del Greco to attempt the field goal. Bracken holding. It is long enough, and it is good. And they wind up with three. So 2-10 to go in the half, and the Bears on top. Real Mike Ditka will tell you that. The Bears play him November the 16th, and he's already looking ahead to that. Del Greco to kick off, a bouncing, swimming kick, and that's a live ball. 
as it was touched out at the five yard line and coming back out with it is Sanders and Sanders runs it out of bounds at the 12. You will run it back as far as you can. You'll give it extra effort because you do not want to bobble it down there and then go over and look into the eyes of Mike Ditka. Sanders had to go right through the legs. That could have left him down inside the five. Let's look at it again. Tried to feel it. Again, the slippery turf. Down he goes. But he does work his way back out to the 11-yard line. Good move by Sanders. Two-minute warning in Green Bay. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford with you. Chicago leading Green Bay 10-6. And the Bears have the football at their own 12-yard line. Down to a minute 58. Officially to play from the 11-yard line. And they start from the shotgun. Bears with all of their timeouts remaining. Tom Zack throwing underneath to Suey. And Suey is stopped at the 16-yard line. It'll be second down and six. Kind of surprised that Ditka, who calls the plays, comes right out throwing into the shotgun. A lot of confidence in this young quarterback. Down inside their own 10-yard line, they let him throw. They want to get a drive going if they can. A lot of coaches would just let it run out if he had a young quarterback. But he gives it to Peyton. So even though it's a wide-open formation, it's been conservative so far. A short little dump pass, and then the inside give, and it's Brian Noble who makes the tackle there. And Chicago has taken a timeout. They'll stop the clock with 124. They may be doing Green Bay a favor by taking a timeout here if Green Bay stops them on the next play. So timeout. Meanwhile, another wild game yesterday, New England and Seattle. Both teams coming in unbeaten in Foxborough. Each 2-0 at the beginning of play. New England had a 24-21 lead. Tony Eason has been brilliant in the early season. Yesterday, 414 yards, but as it turns out, in a losing cause here, he gets Stanley Morgan, who's already caught 22 passes this season. Then with a score, New England 31, Seattle 24. Rich Camarillo, who in six seasons had never had a punt blocked, had his second of the day blocked by number 23, Patrick Hunter. The ball recovered in the end zone by Paul Moyer, coming into your picture, number 21, and that tied the game. And then New England unable to move the football with a score 31-31. All of this taking place in the last three minutes of the game. And with 122 remaining, Third Seattle got six. the ball back. And out of the shotgun, it was Dave Craig going deep, hitting a wide open Ray Butler down the sideline for the touchdown. And Seattle goes to 3-0 with a 38-31 win. Meanwhile, here, the Bears have the football. And on third and six, it's Tomzak throwing, and it's incomplete. And a penalty flag is down at the 13. Tomzak dancing around a little back there, starting to get a little pressure from Green Bay, and Green Bay is indicating it's going to be holding against the Bears, and that will give them a first down. Yeah, and they're wrong. And the Bears, as it turns out, did do the Packers a favor by taking years. that timeout. Declined. Fourth down. Keith Van Horn called for the hold. Ball at the 15, and Buford in the kick. Green Bay should have fairly good field position. They have two timeouts and 119 remaining on the clock. Walter Stanley stands at his own 40-yard line. He's been brilliant tonight. Had that long run back, called back because of the penalty. One nineteen remaining in the half. They set up the return. Good kick. Backs him to the 33, and a nice tackle is made at that spot by Neil Anderson. That's that number one draft choice, the running back out of Florida, the man who saw his first NFL action before, and he just got enough of him after a 51-yard punt. And so the Green Bay Packers have the football with 109 to play in the first half. And Green Bay has two timeouts remaining. There's the fridge. And Randy Wright's coming back. And Randy Wright comes back into the game. He'd been to the locker room. Man. After Ferragamo had led them on a drive that culminated with a field goal. 
I think once again now they probably had a quick x-ray just to make sure nothing was wrong either with the neck or that shoulder. He warmed up well on the sidelines. First and 10 from the 34 yard line as Wright dumps it off and it's incomplete as Gary Ellis drops the football. He wasn't going very far anyway. Second down and 10. Holding 78 the last yard. 105 now to play in the first half. Bears on top, 10 6. Nothing terribly dramatic thus far tonight, but when you watch the Bears, as we did so many times last year, you just kind of hold your breath, expecting something to happen, and it can happen offensively, or it certainly can happen defensively. Low snap, and Wright comes up with it and throws it over the middle for Ellison, and he's tackled at the 33-yard line. Dave Dewerson wasn't letting him get anywhere. And Dan Hampton right in the quarterback space once again. No way you can think downfield when you're getting that kind of pressure. You're not getting the sacks, but you're getting the pressure. Meanwhile, Chicago has now taken a timeout. So the Bears take this timeout, figuring it's third and 10 with 51 seconds, and Randy Wright comes over to talk it over. So the Chicago defense, third and 10, and Greg with Wright, and Ditka with enough obvious confidence in that tremendous defense to figure they can hold them, and then get the ball back. Meanwhile, the refrigerator, you've heard everything there is to know about the refrigerator, but here's the latest story. We're staying at the same hotel with the Bears. They got a late checkout today. I happen to be checking out at 4 o'clock before the Bears left, and a woman is checking in, and they want to give her the room that Perry will vacate, but he's not out of there yet. The desk clerk says, we can't give you the key. The refrigerator is in there. She says, I don't want a room with a refrigerator. <laughs> The desk clerk says, you don't understand, the refrigerator. And then it was like a Bob Newhart routine. <laughs> you can't get in till the refrigerator gets out. And he was probably right. She wouldn't fit in there if the refrigerator was in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's mellowing out a little bit. He's smoothing out. He was with Spencer Christian on Good Morning America today, and he was offering a little advice on the weather. I remember he used to blush and couldn't quite handle it a year ago, but the legend grows, and he continues to mellow and mature. Third down and 10. Epps at the 46, and he almost circled back to negate the first down, but he picks up enough as he gets it to the 46. He got a 12-yard gain and almost ran it into a 9-yard pickup. So much for the Bears using a timeout. Report on right as a jammed finger. Meanwhile, they don't call a timeout. They still have two remaining from the 46-yard line. He's under pressure from Dent. Gets it off to Gary Ellis. Ellis trying to get out of bounds and is shoved out of bounds on the far side by Mike Richardson with 17 seconds. Good pressure this time by Dent. Richard Dent just swatted the quarterback that time, Randy Wright. Didn't hurt him, but uh, he'll, he'll think about it next time. Again, you can't go upfield with this kind of pressure. No one even touched Dent on this play. He had just freewheeling. And Ditka, who is very outspoken and will tell you just about what he thinks about any of his ball players speaks very candidly has not been happy with the way Richard Dent has come along this season although he said he is starting to ground into shape once again it is second down and two at the 45 out of the shotgun they have two timeouts remaining 17 seconds on the clock Wright throwing underneath again and incomplete intended for Ellis so it's third down with 13 seconds. And you're right, delivering a lot of one hoppers tonight. As it turns out, they should have used the timeout after that last reception. And before this incompletion, because now they're down to 13 seconds. And what it amounts to is they have an extra timeout. Del Greco did that against New Orleans. That's, that is about as far as they're going to let him kick off the natural surface. That ball sinks into the grass and. Forrest Gregg said, we'll let him go from about 50, and that's about it. Third down and two. When I say an extra timeout, they have one they won't even need, the way it turns out at this point, as the pass is caught at the 28-yard line. And is he out of bounds? He stayed in. The clock is stopped with seven seconds on a Green Bay timeout. 
Good move by Ride. Steps back into the pocket, gets away from Hampton, and strong arms it. That's a tough pass to throw. He was on the move, all arm, gets it to Epps. And once again, it was low, but Wright was lucky to get it there, and they have moved to within Del Greco range. And so meanwhile, they do take the timeout, but as we say, they, if they had taken the earlier timeout, it might have been beneficial in the sense that right now they still have one remaining, but you can't afford to run another play with seven seconds. You've got to try to kick it. His best, as we showed you a graphic a few moments ago, 50 yards last week against New Orleans. The distance comes off when you kick from a natural surface, particularly here in Green Bay, where the grass is a little hairy, a little long. The ball will settle into that, and that will take something off it. It'll be a 45-yard attempt. The Packers with two field goals tonight. Again, Green Bay has scored only one touchdown this season. Beaten 31-3 by Houston. Beaten 24-10 last week by New Orleans. And thus, uh, the way things appear at the moment, unless we have a fake or somehow the Packers get into the end zone, they will have gone 10 quarters with one touchdown. About 46 yards. Bracken holding. Snap and placement are good. The kick is long enough, and the kick is good. Give that three to Randy Wright, who got the pass to Epps. He got it into field goal range with seven seconds left. That'll spark him. They're in the game, 10 to 9, and a lot of people thought this would be a rout. Again, he had about the limit of it, but he really put a big foot into this one. He had a 50-yarder a week ago The Forrest Gregg was very impressed with. He said it would have gone about 55, so Del Greco gets the Packers close. And three seconds, and Del Greco will kick off to Chicago with time for only the run back. Ditka watched his team win opening day 41 31 he watched them win last week in overtime and now he's going to go back into the locker room the way things look at the moment with a one point lead he expected a tough one we talked to him this morning and uh, he's getting a tough one what is happening however he's letting a lot of youngsters get all fired up and thinking so these are the Chicago Bears the ones we watched demolish New England 46 10 in the Super Bowl 20. A lot of young kids in college at the time, 10 of them, as a matter of fact, rookies on this Green Bay team. We don't let them get steamed up too much at home, particularly here in Green Bay. Before this partisan crowd, they're going to make it doubly difficult for you. And quite frankly, the Bears have struggled through their first two games. They have looked less than terrific, but still they come in 2-0. and When you look at the Chicago schedule, it would be almost impossible for the Bears not to make the playoffs. They have a very soft schedule. And they're already 2-0. And about to go into the locker room with the lead at the half, unless we have an 85-yard run back by Thomas Sanders. And he winds up considerably shy of that figure, and the first half ends with markers being thrown, a skirmish on the far side. Jeff Shue was in on the tackle. Meanwhile, the cheerleaders and bands have already <laughs> made their entrance onto the field as we get set for the penalty call changing this game completely aren't we so and to make it official we'll get the call from Fred Wyatt we have a 15 yard face mask on number 38 on the tackle 15 yard penalty there will be one more play mm. can't end on a defensive foul get the band off John Sullivan, number 38, out of the USFL, played his college ball at Cal Berkeley, and there he is right there, little doubt about it. Dangerous anytime you get a hand near that face mask, and that's why they are so severe on it. And what we probably have remaining is a Hail Mary pass where <laughs> you put the ball up, hope again for the defensive foul, because the half or the game cannot end on a defensive foul, and should it happen down far enough, you might have an opportunity for a field goal. Speaking of prayers, that's exactly what Sullivan is doing right now. Believe me. Praying. I'd like to go back with Greg. 
having prolonged the first half and having it cost you a touchdown. He smiles a lot, but he also appears as though he could be big, mean, and emotional. Tom Zach, and that's exactly what he's going to do. The Hail Mary is Galt's in the area wow. and got his hands on it pretty close. Billy Galt, the Olympic speedster from a few years ago, made the 80 Olympic team as a, as a sprinter, and then became one of the great world-class hurdlers of all time. Now, he almost got there, and he just ran right into this. Defensively, Mark Lee was there, but I don't think he ever dreamed that Galt could get there that quickly. A Hail Mary and Ole Sullivan's prayers were answered as we've come to the half. 10-9 to Chicago. We'll be back in Green Bay after this word and a message from your local station. Green Bay, where the Bears are leading the Packers by one at halftime. A lot of action around the National Football League yesterday. Some tremendous games, as a matter of fact. One of them, however, stood out. And that, of course, it was the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets. Keep in mind, this was to be the year of the defense. Remember? Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey, yesterday. A shootout between the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets. And what a day for Ken O'Brien, the best day of his career as he teamed up with Wesley Walker, the speedy wide receiver who had a great day against the Dolphins, four touchdowns. Picking up the action on the second quarter, Miami leading 21-17. O'Brien is back, looks left. Down the sideline on the right side is Wesley Walker, 65 yards, and the Jets had the lead 24-21. Still in the second quarter, the Jets leading 24-21 with a minute remaining in the half. O'Brien is back, looks left again. Again, he comes back to Walker, who gets away from number 44, Paul Langford, on the 20, cuts to the middle of the field, take it in for 50 yards out the halftime score, the Jets leading 31-21. Dan Marino, a spectacular day for the Dolphins quarterback. Six touchdowns on this day, 448 yards. It's 31-21, the Jets, when Marino drops back. He looks for Mark Duper. Duper will take it at the three-yard line and back into the end zone for Mark Duper. Seven receptions on the day, 154 yards. He cut the Jet lead to 31-28. Now in the fourth quarter, Miami leading 38-31. Dennis Blige takes the pitch out from Ken O'Brien. Sweeps left, bounces off Paul Langford into the end zone, and the score is tied at 38. It was still hold your breath time. Much more to come. Three minutes left in the game, tied at 38. Dan Marino is back, looking for his other mark. And he hits Mark Clayton from four yards out. Touchdown to get the Dolphins a 45-38 lead. Clayton on the day, eight receptions, 174 yards. Now time running out. Time for one more play for the Jets. The Dolphins leading 45-38. Back goes O'Brien. Once again, he looks for number 85, Wesley Walker. Walker near the goal line. Backs into the end zone as time expires to tie it at 45. Then in overtime, Miami's Bob Reves will kick off. Michael Harper of the Jets awaits the ball at the three-yard line. Hits the wedge, looking for the gap, but all he finds are Dolphins. The ball comes loose, and it appears to be a fumble, but the officials rule otherwise, and the Jets maintain possession. Later in the drive, with first down and 10 at Miami's 43-yard line, Ken O'Brien will drop once again. Never leave it until they stop it, is an old football adage. Walker once again, he beats number 28, Don McNeil, 43-yard touchdown, Walker's fourth of the game. The Jets win it for the day, 884 passing yardage, a new NFL record. Like I said, the defense is back. And here in Green Bay, the teams are coming back out on the field, Chicago over Green Bay, 10-9. to ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will be back right after this from our local stations. Well, it's raining in Green Bay, and they expected a lot of it. We had a big storm come through here last night and some rain this morning but dry since the opening kickoff however as halftime wound down it has started to rain and I suppose in a Bears Packers game that's pretty appropriate and Forrest Gregg was very candid this morning we asked him if it rained what would he do he said I'll throw the football very open about it Ditka said we won't change anything but that's my Ditka actually the rain kind of goes with the Bears Green Bay game this one full of tradition. Where a lot of blood was spilt and a lot of mud was played in. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford as we start the second half at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And it's Stanley from the goal line to the 10 to the 20. 30. 40 into Bears territory and run down by number 20, Thomas Sanders. So an auspicious beginning of the second half for the Green Bay Packers. He is impressive. Fourth round 
pick of a year ago from Mesa College out in Grand Junction. Didn't play football there, but he played a couple of years out of Colorado. But he is a fine return man. This is his second excellent return of a kickoff. And perhaps he should learn to put it away, but you get a feeling he knows where he is. When you get in traffic, you put it, you put it away. But there were a lot of bears swinging at that football with breathing deeply, feeling that they could take it out of his hands. But a good return by Walter Stanley. And so Green Bay now from the 46-yard line. Randy Wright throwing over the middle at the 29-yard line to Phillip Epps. And Epps is down at the 28th. World-class sprinter out of TCU in his fifth season. Let's take a look at Epps again. Again, you have to respect that tremendous speed. 10-1 for the 100 meters as a sprinter there at TCU. But Richardson was playing him up very close. You have to admire also Randy Wright, who got a tremendous shot from Steve McMichael. He came in totally untouched and barreled into Randy Wright. Wright got right back up. And keep in mind, he was shaken up, taken out of the game earlier on. Jesse Clark is in. He is the sole running back in this set. On first down, Green Bay at the Chicago 28-yard line. Bears lead 10-9. Right. Oh, dropped at the 37. He was looking Lofton's way. He looked over there, and Lofton was one-on-one -on -one and covered by Reggie Phillips. And there's a man who's no stranger to a sack, Dent. Bottom of your screen, Richard Dent. Nobody touched him. There was an... Uh, a mild attempt there by Jesse Clark against Richard Dent, who seems to be rounding out and rounding out into shape tonight because he's been a little slow coming on. But this is about as civilized as I've seen this Bear defense play in a couple of years. Since certainly maybe the fact that Buddy Ryan has left, they are not doing a lot of the sophisticated blitzing out of their 46 that they've done in the past. They are playing, playing it almost straight with the four-man rush tonight. Second down and 19 from the 37-yard line. Overthrown. Stanley was the intended receiver. Third and long now for Randy Wright. Here is the offensive set. Trying to add a little confusion. And everyone confused on that one. Back to the drawing board. Old pal of mine walked into the booth. Paul Horning wearing his brand new Hall of Fame ring. Congratulations, Paul, baby. Long time coming, too long. Third down and 19, Green Bay from the 37-yard line. Right out of the shotgun, inside handoff, and oh. the reverse now. Coming back this way is Epps. Inside the 35, and knocked out of bounds at the 32. Dave Dewerson knocked him out of bounds, and we're looking at a 49-yard field goal right now. Epps on the reverse. As Del Greco comes back into the game now. So a 49-yard attempt coming up. They could work on this one a little bit. There is Ellerson inside handoff, and he almost had to lateral that to Epps. Bears always pursue very heavily, but they get back quickly. Durison, who has just been tremendous, not only last year, but in the first two games, read it all, came all the way across the field to make the stop. This will be a 50-yard attempt. Last week, he kicked the 50-yarder at New Orleans. That is his career best. And he's pumped up tonight. He's kicked three for three. Bracken holds. The kick is long enough, and it's good. The Packers lead. He's been brilliant tonight. It's a strange breed, these kickers. Everyone out there bleeding, working, slaving. If you miss, you know you're going to go to the sidelines. They're going to crawl all over you. If you make it, Total elation. And he's just tied a club record among those holding the mark, Paul Horning. Al Del Greco tying a club record. He himself, part owner of that mark, he kicked four against Detroit last December. We mentioned Paul Horning and some of the others. Jerry Kramer did it. Chester Markle five times. Bernie and Stenerud. And now Del Greco for the second time. And there's a lot of time left. 28 minutes and eight seconds. We have a pumped up Packer team now. They're going to be tough to handle from now on the way the Bears are playing. Picked up at the eight by Thomas Sanders. Have to work on the run back since the second time Sanders has had trouble. Let's pause five seconds here to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KSTP TV, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Channel 5. Green Bay on top. 
12 to 10. If you're just tuning in, that's not a typo. I point out the last time the Bears lost, Monday night, back in November of last year, the Miami Dolphins came out. They threw short. They popped Marino into roll quick rollouts. They kept the Bears off his back. And then in the second quarter, they totally dominated the Bears. That was December 2nd, to be exact. 38 24, Miami, and they are in trouble right now. Tom Zack is still the quarterback from the eight yard line, first and ten. They send Suey in motion. Tom Zack's going to throw, hit Suey at the nine. He takes it out to the 14. And on the Packer bench, the happiest man in the ballpark right now. Al Del Greco. Like I say, you make it, lots of elation. You miss it, they're hard to find. Meanwhile, as far as the Bears are concerned, you begin to wonder about McMahon. Ditka would love to go through the game without using McMahon. He'd like to save him and rest him, and they've got a big one at Cincinnati next Sunday. Also, as Frank mentioned before, if he doesn't want to go with Tom Zack any further, we could also see Fuller. Second and three from the 14-yard line. He sends Moorhead in motion. Pitches it to Peyton back to Suey. Peyton, first down, takes it out to the 21. Gets the first down, but he came within, and that's eyelash of breaking a big one. Walter Peyton doesn't go all the way with big plays for you, but he turns two yarders into eight yarders more than anyone I've ever seen. Here he is when he needs the first down, breaks back inside, and finally tripped up there by Dorsey. Peyton is now 11 for 32. He's carried 11 times, 32 yards. Jim McMahon doesn't look phased a bit. But his club is. He's on another time zone. <laughs> Always. First down for the 21. Peyton makes the catch, and it's a five-yard pickup out to the 26-yard line. Second down and five. Tough hitting there tonight. That was Noble, the linebacker that Forrest Greg is so high on. Paul Horning, who's in our booth now, told me <laughs> during the commercial that he talked with Forrest Greg this morning and his eyes were dilated. And he said, Paul, this is one I'd like to put the pads on and get back in there to play. Here's Peyton doing his move. Noble coming over to make the stop, but Peyton again gets more yardage than it appears, getting out for about seven. Second down call at four, 27 yard line. Green Bay leads by two. 10.50 to play in the third. Suey on a draw. Has the first down. And a Walter Payton block sprung it. Chicago at the 33. There's Walter. Let's take a look at it. He'll lead the draw play. Watch him. He sets up, makes it look like pass. That's what you do in the draw. He cuts right there, the complete football player. And he not only made the block, he cut Brian Noble. He gave him five more, gets the first down. The Bears keep the drive moving. First and 10, crowd chanting defense. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. And Tom Zach. Ran out of time on the 30-second clock. Ditka saying, what's going on here? Give me a break. Does Ditka think that Tom Zach stopped because he couldn't hear the signals? And thus is contending that that should have been the call? If he is, he's not going to get it anyway. It's a delay of the game, and it's five yards, and it's back to the 28, and it's first and 15. That's what you honestly don't get with a Jim McMahon. He would have done something. Suey in motion. Tom Zach throws. Nice catch by Suey at the 33. Takes it to the 35. And it'll be second down eight. John Anderson, the outside backer number 59, who kicked a field goal for the Packers back in 1979, made the tackle. Lambeau Field, Green Bay. On Lombardi Avenue, I like yeah. it. Keep in mind, too, the Packers, like all of the teams in the NFL, play eight home games, but only five of them are here. The other three are in Milwaukee. Community-owned, great facility here. Second and eight, Chicago from the 35. Suey in motion. Peyton. 
gets three, takes it to the 38-yard line. Dorsey and Anderson converge on the tackle. Coming up a week from tonight will be in St. Louis, the Dallas Cowboys, 2-1, and one, and an exciting team, obviously, with Herschel Walker averaging over seven yards a carry and putting a lot of points on the board against the St. Louis Cardinals. This game we're watching certainly not a thing of beauty, but there is some heavy hitting going on down there now. Third and four. Tom Zack throws out to the 41, short of the first down. Gentry makes the catch, but Marcy Cade, the man who cost Green Bay a number one choice. He was San Diego's number one pick a year back. They picked him up in a deal, and Marcy Cade makes the tackle, stops Gentry shy of the first down, and the Packers, who have the lead, will be getting the ball back. They'd give one for Marcy Cade every year if they could. He made the play. He had to take it in dead stride, made the play, prevented the first down by a couple of yards, and the pack will get the ball back. Buford to punt. Stanley, who earlier had a punt, called back on a penalty, and we've got a flag down at the snap. So a marker is down. He lets it bounce. It goes into the end zone, and let's see about the call from Fred Wyant. It's against Chicago. Green Bay will decline that. They want the football back. And with the touchback, they'll get Illegal it to the 20-yard line. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Decline. And they take the touchback, and that gives them the ball at the 20-yard line. So the Green Bay Packers, almost unbelievably, coming off two depressing performances, lead the world champions. The house is paid up. Kids are out of college. Things are fantastic. So what's the problem? Things are not so fantastic. After 30 years, I realized a financial genius. I'm not. You need some advice. You put a lot into life. You deserve to get the most out of it. We can help. I'm Linda Ross. I represent New York Life. At New York Life, we have the resources to make the most of your resources. We offer a range of financial opportunities, including mutual funds, annuities, whole life plans, and limited partnerships. Sure I will. Thank you. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Get the most out of life with New York Life. One quick way to put a little fun in your life is this special value Ford Ranger. It comes loaded. Well, there's one man who has not lost faith. Some of the fans beginning to wonder how bad this team was. Meanwhile, the other coach, Mike Ditka, has perhaps lost a little faith at the moment in the starting quarterback, Tom Zach, because Steve Fuller is loosening up. Green Bay leads 12 to 10. Midway through the third quarter. Packers at their own 20. And Randy Wright hands the ball off to Ellerson, who takes it out to the 21-yard line for a gain of one in the fridge is on top of him. And Mike Singletary reading that from off the line of scrimmage drilled in there. In on the tackle along with number 76, Steve Michael, and we might see a different Bears defense. Now, I think they're getting a little embarrassed by all this. Singletary will get him fired up. Second and nine. Right asking for some quiet. Going for a loft, and he makes his third catch of the night and takes it out to the 28-yard line. Stopped there by Reggie Phillips, and Lofton closing in on Hudson's team record 488 receptions. That's 479 now in his career. Lofton on the reception. He's struggling to get the first down, and one of the Bears almost steps on Lofton's face, and it is Wilbur Marshall now. Ooh. When Wilbur Marshall 
went back to his own hut and he came up to loft and gave him a pat on the fanny and I'm sure he told him didn't mean to do that part and I'm sure he didn't third and two I think he said that fullback Clark that was some patient Clark on a third and two is stopped at the 29 by Otis Wilson and so the Packers get very conservative on third and short and another little altercation but yeah. Chicago is going to get the ball back have to do that against the number one defense against the rush from a year ago that's no different tonight you've got a third and it was a long two you can't get conservative and sit on it crack into kick and back to receive is Barnes Bracken has been with five different professional teams but the Packers are the only team for which he's kicked in the regular season Barnes at the 27 nice move and then starts to run out of room and is dragged down at the 32. And so Chicago has the football with 538 to play in the third. Sellout crowd at Lambeau Field. Their pack leads 12 to 10. And the Bears have gone to Steve Fuller. The veteran out of Clemson after Tom Zack had guided the team. They keep McMahon on the bench. And Ditka calls Fuller's number midway through the third period. Fuller pump faking, going deep down the sideline and incomplete, and a marker is down. Willie Gold was out there. He'd beaten the coverage, and a flag is down. It was contact made, whether it be against Gault or the defender, I don't know. Green Bay. I like that. You bring Fuller off the bench now. Fuller's played a lot of football. He used to be a starter for Kansas City before he was traded to L.A. and then to the Bears three years ago. So you can defend a little more on him in a tough situation. Illegal contact, defense, first down. Let's take a look at Galt, the speedster with the Olympic speed. Turns in, gets the pump fake, and there is the collision. Tim Lewis, you can't try and chuck him five yards beyond in the line of scrimmage, so the first down is out close to the 38-yard line. First and 10, Chicago from the 38. Green Bay on top by two. Galt makes the catch. And Galt gets to the 46-yard line and lost the ball after the play had ended. Tim Lewis providing the coverage on the play. Tim Lewis way off of Galt. They saw that on the little hitch a moment ago. Here he is looking in, and Lewis is not even in your picture for the longest time. Galt looking for somewhere to go loses the football but it goes out of bounds and they get the advance on it but you have got to respect Willie Galt we saw him right before the end of the first half do about a four nothing 40 to get under a, a pass that they did not complete but he has tremendous speed second and three from the 45 that's right then in motion Peyton with the football runs into the arms of Randy Scott number 55 and he doesn't have the first it'll be third in the yard coming up Randy Scott sixth year out of Alabama the Packers leading tackler last year legal motion indicated against the Bears on that play hey, you can't say enough about Forrest Gregg he really hung his neck out he unloaded a lot of veterans one of them being Kaufman the great tight end three-time pro bowler out of the last four years he got rid of Lynn Dickey who had been the starter here for so long. He brought in 10 rookies. And he also said, don't bring me anyone that's not big enough to tilt the room in my office. Right now, Illegal they, motion, they, number 78, second down. They were looking for guidance from Greg as to what they should do on that penalty call. It would have been third down and one or second and eight. And they've obviously opted for the second and eight. You've got third and one and Peyton back there. That's a gimme. Second and eight, Chicago at its own 40, 5.18 to go. Third period, the Packers on four Del Greco field goals, leading 12-10. Packers have been coming with the blitz on second down, and they do again. Suey was the man in motion, dumped over the middle for Peyton. Peyton oh. at his own 45 to the 50, and dropped at the 44-yard line, and what a fake he put on. That's Tim so Lewis sweet. makes the tackle. Don't you wish you could do that? Mm. I wish I could have done that. Almost every running back wishes they could have done that. He did it with the head, he did it with the hips, and poor old Lewis didn't have a clue what he was going to do. 
Again, the blitz is on, as you can see, bottom of your screen. Anderson, Peyton uh, just got one to beat here. Just totally loses Lewis. You missed the actual move, but you saw it on the wide shot. It was just something to behold. Only Ginger Rogers could have stayed with him on that play. First down, Chicago at the Green Bay 42. 424 to go in the third. Suey is in motion again. Fuller. Oh, what a pop at the 36. Loose football. Brian Noble is there. And does he have it? And the officials are saying no. Dorsey put some hit. Brian Noble put the hit on. Dorsey coming up with the football. But they are saying no. Watch Brian Noble. Matt Suey, the receiver. There is Noble. Second year man that Forrest Gregg is really high on. And the crowd upset over the call. I believe they're checking upstairs. If they did, it's been upheld because they're still at the 43-yard line, and it's second down and 10. Fuller throws back the other way to Reitman, and Reitman tries to lateral it off. The ball is still loose, and the Bears wind up with it. I mean, that works if you're the University of California on a run back, but nowhere else. A dangerous play, and the Bears are lucky to maintain possession. Looked like a rugby scrum. Jeff Shue, I think, stayed out there, stayed at home, if you will, against the the long pass across the field, and it is indeed dangerous. There is Fuller. Here is Reitman. And it is Jeff Shue who stays at home. The ball is pulled loose. I think it was an attempted lateral trying to get the ball to Jay Hilgenberg, the center. Hilgenberg tries to pick it up. He doesn't get it up, and it's the all-pro Jim Covert who makes the cover. So Chicago pushed back to the Green Bay 47. It's third down, 15. You see this crowd. These youngsters are playing some football game. And it's being appreciated. That's the offensive coordinator talking to Steve Fuller, Ed Hughes. They have been not terribly successful in anything that they have tried tonight offensively. And Chicago has taken a timeout. Well, when you look at the Bears, again, it goes back to the fact on opening day, they scored 41 points, but they gave up 31. That was a surprise. Last week, they were tested, taken to the limit by Philadelphia, went at 13-10. They're on their way to being taken to the limit tonight. And again, as you go down their schedule, it's a soft one for the most part. Not next week, though. They're at Cincinnati. Meanwhile, our schedule, college football, features two games. Check your local listings this Saturday. Purdue taking on Notre Dame, Tennessee against Auburn. By the way, in the sellout crowd tonight, Roger Clemens, who has a night off with the Boston Red Sox, has driven up with Calvin Chiroldi to take in the game. And we'll be seeing the Red Sox in a couple of weeks. Well, the way things look, we'll be seeing the Red Sox. They have yet to clinch. But, uh, 24th yesterday? Yep, it'll be a major surprise if they don't. Boston against California coming up. Or the Mets in Houston will have coverage of both league championship series for you beginning October 7th. Watching the Bears, you get the feeling of how important a great quarterback can be, a top quarterback can be. And without Jim McMahon, they are just an ordinary offensive team. You put him in there, we've seen it happen over and over. They become explosive. They become, they take on his own character. He just sparks a football team, and that's what you need from a quarterback, whether he is great physical talent or not. When he comes in there, something happens, and this Bear team offensively is not even close to what they are with Jim McMahon. They tried Tom Zach. They tried Fuller. They tried him in 84. They tried him last year. He is just not Jim McMahon. Third down, 15 from the Green Bay, 48. Fuller fumbles, picks it up, and down to the 40. So Fuller picks up seven yards. Tim Harris gets credit for the tackle. And the Bears sending in their punting unit, led by Buford. They'd have to be considering a 57-yard field goal and no shot at all with that from Kevin Butler. And if you miss it, then you give Green Bay the ball near midfield. So Buford to kick. 
his average will go down. He's averaging better than 50 yards a kick tonight. The best he can do right here is 39. Stanley back at the 10. Clock is ticking. 225 to go in the third. Angles it for the near side. And it's a touchback. Too far. Out it will come to the 20. A net of 19, and Green Bay will have the ball on its own 20-yard line. The spread on this game was the biggest in week three. Green Bay, a decided underdog coming in and leading 12 to 10, and that's how the Packers' last four possessions have wound up with three field goals. And in the last one, when they had the third and two and opted for Clark up the middle, he was stopped shy of it, and they had the punt. First and 10, Green Bay from the 20. Ellis goes in motion. And right incomplete, intended for Gary Ellerson. They have both Ellerson and Ellis in the game. It's second down and 10 from the 20. Bears again, relatively uncomplicated, uh, at least in terms of what you think of from last year. They got up there and they occasionally show the 46 not very often tonight by the way they didn't use it at all against Buddy Ryan and the Eagles a week ago uh, according to Gary Fensick although that was Ditka tantalizing and teasing Buddy Ryan we don't know but they have been fairly simple tonight defensively second and ten Green Bay from the 20 Epps is in motion Epps crossing over the middle Ooh. Epps makes the catch and Epps pays the price Singletary is there Singletary looking right in at the quarterback takes his zone reads the eyes of the quarterback spins back and just has a brief glimpse before he makes the contact there's a major hitter Mark Singletary but he's a major factor in other ways for this bear defense emotional leader very bright calls all the defenses always there a third and five right throwing into a lot of traffic and he was lucky that wasn't picked off somebody blew the route because Stanley was right there and Ellison the two of them were like twins and McMichael and Hampton again closing in on our right forcing to get rid of it into a very crowded area very crowded they're toughening up so the Bears hold them again and the Packers to kick and dropping back is the rookie out of Oregon Lou Barnes Brack in the punt. Beauty. Good kick. 30-yard line. Barnes. Great tackle, but there's a flag. Penalty marker goes down. As the tackle was made by number 29, that's Ken Stills, who was shaken up earlier. And he's very much back in the game. I don't know whether it was a clip or not, but they certainly could have called a couple of them. Illegal block in the back, mm. above the waist. First down. There were a pair of them. Jim Morrissey, I think, was the man. Meanwhile, as far as rushing offense is concerned, the Bears averaging better than five yards a carry in each of their first two games and most of that of course due to Peyton and tonight held a 75 total yards on the ground and three and a half yards a carry and Peyton has 35 yards a tough Green Bay defense and again a tribute to Forrest Gregg who stuck his head out of the line this year dumped a lot of people a lot of name people if you could say that about Green Bay because they did not have a lot of name people but he is building this team in his own image, exactly what he wants. And you know what happens if it doesn't work to coaches. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Gentry in motion. Fuller throwing. Gentry makes the catch and has the first down, gets it out to the 36-yard line. Dorsey in on the stop. Now, Frank, I said on the scene set tonight, uh, it's simple, but Chicago had to do two things. Number one, control the ball somewhat. Two, contain Peyton, but neither of us thought either was possible. But that's what's been happening as Dorsey comes limping off, and Gentry also paid the price. Gentry, they would sorely miss. 
They are very short on wide receivers. I mentioned earlier Dennis McKinnon not coming back from knee surgery after the Super Bowl. Willie Gaunt now the only veteran wide receiver they have in the field. With Thomas in the game and in motion, it's Moorhead who makes the catch, fumbles the football at the 47-yard line. No call yet. Moorhead made the reception. Moorhead made the catch, and Chicago has it. And they recovered the fumble. The ball was live. And it's Moorhead who recovers his own fumble as he emerges from the bottom of the pile. He made a great effort to get that ball back because it was loose. And right on target is Fuller. Gets it in there. And you can see it is Flynn and Cade. Cade pulling the ball loose. And Moorhead struggling, scrambling around, and getting it back. Here it is again. There's Cade. We mm -hmm. talked about him earlier. Mostly Cade coming from San Diego. They gave up a number one to get him. San Diego got him for a third a year ago, but they couldn't sign him. First and ten, Chicago from the 48-yard line. Short drop, quick pass to Gold, and Gold bumps heads, and that's a Packer trademark, but not under these circumstances. As Tim Lewis is there, that could be bad. Tim Lewis really takes a pop, and he has not moved. He took that straight right into Willie Galt's helmet. There was no sliding off the helmet; it was just straight on. Hmm, hate to see that. Got it again. Galt on a little hitch. Lewis has been playing way off Galt. That's why they come back with it. Galt puts the head down, takes it straight on. And still, they continue to look at Tim Lewis. Lewis at the right corner. Fake to Peyton, and it's dropped by Thomas. Calvin Thomas was right there. Second down and 10. Fuller, as I mentioned, had one fine season, a couple of fine seasons, as a matter of fact, with Kansas City as a starter back in 80 and 81. Big year in, in 1980. Traded to Los Angeles in 1983 and never played. Came to Chicago in 84 and filled in at the end of that season for Jim McMahon and got the Bears into the playoffs before they were eliminated by San Francisco. He filled in last year. He is not a great quarterback, but he will not hurt you either. Second and ten from the 38-yard line. Fuller, who is six for eight, is now six for nine, and a couple of drops in a row. Peyton this time. So it'll be third down and ten for Chicago at the Green Bay 38-yard line. 14:03 to play in the fourth. Just good defensive pressure on the part of Green Bay against Fuller. As Eddie Hughes, the offensive coordinator, he used to work under Tom. Landry uh, briefly was head coach down at Houston and also played in the time Landry, with the Giants in the 50s. Third and ten. Packers go with their dime set up here. Six defensive backs out of the shotgun. They give it to Peyton. He has some room through the middle, but it closes in a hurry, and he has stopped at the 33-yard line. Tom Flynn making the tackle, and it'll be fourth down and five. So now with Butler, we're talking about a 51-yard effort. Butler's career high last week, a 47-yarder. Two yeah. weeks ago, actually, against Cleveland, and then last week, he missed four May two, and they're going to go. Well, he had Butler. one from 60 yards at Georgia. They've let him try it for the Bears from 62 yards, so he's got the range. 60 with a T is a little different. Though. That's true, uh, even on an artificial surface. This natural surface, it'll take something off it. 52-yard attempt, so he's trying to eclipse his career best by five yards and give Chicago the lead. And the kick is long enough, and it is good. You betcha. And so Butler, who had a terrible week, even though he wound up with the game-winning kick against Philadelphia, kicks a 52-yarder. And Chicago has the lead, 13-12. Jim McMahon, right in the middle of that, if we look again, he's had the distance. The Bears let him kick one, try one last year from, I think, 62 yards. That thing would have been good from about 60 right there. He really hit it. Ditka, does he like it? 
He took a risk off a natural surface because Green Bay would have had a first down near the 35 yard line had Butler missed. Good decision. Plus the feeling in his arms, he does have the feeling back now as the kickoff is fielded at the goal line and Ken Stills runs it back out to the 25 yard line. So the feeling is back in Lewis's arms and they are taking him to the hospital for further examination. And I think that's the best news we could hope for at this point, right? So Green Bay has the football at its own 25-yard line. 12.53 to play in the fourth. In a way, a typical Bears-Packers game. I mean, the Bears and the Packers can't wind up 35-33, can they? No, they're winding up a little too clean tonight, too. Usually much dirtier and a little messier. Epps in motion. Ellerson and Ellerson gets racked up back at the 19 yard line Wilbur Marshall and Richard Dent do the double team that's been a different Bears defense here in the second half Green Bay moving the ball much more easily in the first half and a much stronger Bear defense but again they stay very conventional with their four man front they just are playing it well and when you have Hampton Perry Dent and not to mention Singletary, Wilson, and Marshall. Well, you can play it just about any way you want to play. Second and 12, Green Bay from their own 23. Epps in motion. Epps makes his eighth catch of the night. Epps looking for the first down and has it as he gets to the 36-yard line, and Gary Fensick makes the tackle. Again, a four-man rush, and again, Randy Wright had the time to find the receiver, and that's exactly what he did. Dennis Gentry, who was shaken up the last time Chicago had the ball, being worked on. Packers at their own 36. Green Bay blown away in their first two games. They're 0-2 in tonight, but they did not have ha what happened to them in those first two games. Against Houston and New Orleans happened tonight. They did not get down early and have to play catch up. That's what they were trying to do. Here's Davis, who's been a silent partner here for a while. He was their big ball carrier early on. And Steve McMichael in on the stop. Steve McMichael out of Texas. And again, with Perry and Dent and Hampton up on that line, McMichael gets less publicity and yet uh, is probably as valuable as any. At least in the minds of Ditka, he is. Epps, by the way, eight catches. That's his career high. As we look at McMichael, he is, <laughs> you're right, one of the unsung ones. Great sense of humor. He's fun to be around. Packers, however, into this fourth quarter of this game, only have one touchdown in the three games that they have played this season. In Sec the air, that is. Second and seven. And it is nearly intercepted as Lofton was there, and the pass was lofted. And Phillips and Fensick are both there. Gary Fensick, number 45. Some talk about Fensick maybe running for mayor someday in Chicago this week. He'd get a vote from Lofton. Fensick, one of the heavy hitters. They've had him over the years. They have Durison, now a big hitter. Todd Bell is back, went to the Pro Bowl after the 84 season. Uh, he came back after holding out all of last year. He's a heavy hitter, but he can't get back in the lineup. Al Harris is back. He missed the season with a contract. He can't get back in as a starter. Third down and seven. Out of the shotgun. Wright steps up, then throws, and it's complete at the 45 of Chicago to Gary Ellis for a first down. So Randy Wright with some improvisation in the Packer drive is alive with 10 20 to go in the fourth. Super effort by Randy Wright. He had Bears breathing all over him back there. Steps back into the pocket. The first pressure comes from Richard Dent. There's Dent, but he was wide, taking his charge upfield. Here is Perry, right in right space. And Ellis coming down with it, breaking one tackle and getting the first down. That's the key thing. Keep it alive. First and 10, Green Bay at the 42, under 10 minutes to play. Bears lead 13-12. on the delay through the middle takes it to the 33 just short of the first down Wilbur Marshall makes the tackle 
Hey, that offensive line is doing a number on this Bear defense. This is a draw play. And Bears thinking pass. Good block against Singletary. Terrific block against Singletary. Hallstrom. That was the key block that got it up close to another first down. These Second are big, this offensive down. line. You've never heard of most of them, I'm sure. Vangrad, Halston, Cannon at center, Neville, Rutgers. But they're all up around 280 and 290. They're huge. Clark and Davis are the running backs on second and one. Davis is the tailback. Clark lays the block, but nobody blocked Dent. <laughs> Richard Dent breaks up the play and turns a second and one into a key third and four. You're a running back. That's embarrassing. And Dent's done it to a lot of them. He just slid off a block over on the right side, trying to turn up field. And Davis is really it upended third and four right now you're looking at a 52 yard field goal if this is an incomplete pass right from the gun here they come throws over the middle it is ruled a completed pass and a fumble and Chicago's football at the 29 Mike Richardson came up with it. Stanley couldn't hold on to it. So it would have been a first down in Chicago's ball. The Bears saved it to then, and they brought him. They brought Singletary, and they brought Marshall. Pressure on right. He got the ball in there. That wasn't what happened. Epps caught the ball. They ruled that he had possession, and indeed he did. Bounces right into Richardson's hands, and the Bears do what they did so frequently a year ago. They turn it over. And this play is subject to review. The umpire, I noticed, had the walkie-talkie out, but they are looking in the replay booth at what you are, and it's pretty obvious right there the call was correct. Now they're going or to was stop it? <laughs> or was it? I Let's think see. they're continuing to look. They haven't got the definitive word yet. Let's take another look here. Dave Hamilton is the umpire. Yeah, and the pressure, but Wright was able to get it in depth right in front of Phillips. Oh, he's got it. And in slow motion, as we are showing it to you, it did appear as, the, as if he possessed the ball. But again, the officials are looking at it right next to us. Well, here's your chant of the 80s right now. The first time ever I've heard it. <laughs> replay, replay is what they're chanting at Lambeau Field. Uh, tighten it up. Stanley across the middle. Again, is this indisputable visual evidence? Here we go again with a key phrase. Well, when you're looking to see if it's possession, you're doing it in slow motion. It's difficult. Yeah, there it's going Green Bay's way. Are they going to overrule this? After further review from the replay official, it is an incomplete pass. Is that huh. in Chicago, would they have done that? Well, you know, here we go again. Indisputable visual evidence. And yet another controversy. Dealing with a replay. I don't know. I thought he had possession of the ball. What did you think? It was close. I, you know, again, in slow motion, it looked a little more like it was possession than it did when we watched it initially. But Mike Ditka, we asked him about the replay today at our meeting with him, and he said, well, if you guys would leave it alone and give it a chance to work. And now it has worked definitely against Mike Ditka. And I think he feels like a lot of people. Let's, let's give, it a, give it a shot. And he did not seem upset about it. He accepted it, walked away, and the Packer field goal unit comes on. So Del Greco will attempt a field goal. It'll be a 52-yard attempt. Meanwhile, maybe they're rechecking this. I don't know. I mean, this is, uh, this is a scene we've grown accustomed to. Indisputable is the key word. And there are a few things here. Maybe they're concerned about where the ball was, how much time is left on the clock. Here, here it is in regular speed, regular speed. This is the view the official initially has. This is when I thought he had possession of it because he pulled it in and it was yeah. knocked away. But I you still think he had it. The replay in slow motion is kind of hard to judge. So they're reviewing the review. And here comes Gary Fensick wanting to know what's going on. His first campaign speech. Right, the Yaley. All they're doing, we understand right now, is checking what yard line the ball should be placed at, which is the 35. It'll be a 52-yard attempt. 
and he's been hot for Del Greco. He's four for four. Brack in the hole. Blocked. Blocked. That's Recovered by ball. Green Bay, but it doesn't matter. And the block by Henry Wachter, number 70. Well, they don't get the turnover, but they block the kick, and that is Bear football. Coyote ugly, but it gets the job done. And so how the fortunes for the Packers change what looks like initially a field goal attempt upcoming. Turns out to be a block kick, and Chicago has the ball in Green Bay territory and the lead by one. Flynn on a pass intended for Thomas and Noble breaking up the play. Fuller under pressure. Noble. We've been talking about him all night. Was right where he should have been. Breaks it up. And Flynn is right there. And they definitely would have been in field goal range to extend the lead. Now, what do you do with it against the Bears defense? You got it down near your five-yard line. Well, remember, we pointed out earlier, in a year now, in a whole year, when a team has started against the Bear defense inside their 20, they have scored no touchdowns. And also remember the Packers that scored only one touchdown this season and Wright avoids the safety and gets oh, it. I don't think so. He, was in, does he? he was in the he grasp. He was in the grasp, and that's the ruling. He's in the grasp of Steve McMichael and the safety. Two oh, points. Bears. Again, defense. So Steve McMichael had him in the grasp. And McMichael was the man who tackled Jim Zorn for a safety in last year's Packer Bears game. It wasn't that he did it. Did you see the way he did it? McMichael is so powerful. Again, you hear so much more about Jim Dent, Dan Hampton, but it's not over. Packers only down by three. First and 10, Chicago from the 47-yard line. The pass complete to number 89, Keith Ortego, the second-year man out of McNeese State. He gets close to a first down. Meanwhile, go back to last year's game and notice the similarity there in scoring by quarters. And we talked about that safety in last year's game. Well, there it was, the nine points in the fourth quarter. Bears won 16 to 10. And so uh, tonight with five in the fourth, 15 to 12 Chicago. Watch our research man, Steve Hurt, jump. I wonder how many safeties the Bears had last year. Second down and in inches at the 44-yard line. Suey, the short yardage specialist, among other things. Takes it to the 42. Not really fair to call him only a short yardage specialist. He's even though he has not been a, a particularly instrumental part of tonight's game, so he can do a lot of things. Great athlete of Penn State. Did everything there. Led the team in receptions in the first two games this year. Mm -hmm. For Joe Paterno. He's a Paterno type athlete. Very bright. Good student. Good blocker. Good runner. Good receiver. And doesn't mind playing in the shadow. One of the legends, Walter Payton. First and 10 from the 42. Over the middle, and it's Ortego making the catch at the 30, breaking a tackle inside the 10, and a touchdown. Keith Ortego, who moments ago made his first professional catch, follows that up with a touchdown. And a moment ago, when he made that first catch, I just wanted to comment on this man. His first catch, as we look at the second one for the touchdown, he stayed in bounds. He struggled to stay in bounds to keep the clock running. It showed a lot of cool, a lot of head. And here he is, breaking inside, spinning away from the tackle, and into the end zone. Free agent last year. No receptions last year. But he has made two key ones here in the fourth quarter against the pack. Now Kevin Butler for the extra point. And a lot of the air in the Lambeau Field balloon is gone. 3.38 to go in the fourth with Chicago. Birdie had a great line yesterday. He doesn't believe Fence could go into politics. He said, how do you go into a profession where illegal procedure is rewarded? <laughs> Taken at the one-yard line by Philip Epps, and Epps comes back out 
to the 21. And so Green Bay in dire straits right now, not only down by 10, but uh, lost in the shuffle here. Well, as the very top, which the Bears had last year. First and 10, Green Bay from the 22-yard line. Randy Wright. And it's second down and 10. James, a little bit of it here in the second half. It has been effective. Second and 10, Green Bay from the 22. Right going, and that's picked off at the 40-yard line, and that's Dave Dewerson, who had a big day on Sunday. And a nice... In the first half. 31-yard return for Dewerson. And now Peyton can take some time off the clock. And if ever you're looking for no gain, this is the time. Just keep that clock ticking. Dave Dewerson. He wasn't one of Ryan's guys, and he made that pretty obvious. Not that he and Buddy didn't get along, but he felt that Ryan had favorites in terms of uh, particular individuals on the Bears' defense, and were telling Ryan what they think yesterday. They got beat again, 33-7. Second and 10. That's a lateral. No, it's ruled. Ruled incomplete. That was a lateral, and... We'll take it's a look. Certainly looked like one. Apparently what would Monday night be without a lateral? Look backwards to me. Well, Very close. They have a better look than I do, but it did look from our angle as if it Green Bay Packer. 34 and 52. Kicks one from the 18, and this 28 yarder is good. And the Bears have packed on three more and lead by the odd combination. This one's over, Chicago is 3-0. Green Bay is 0-3, Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, and that's the story from Green Bay with a final score with Chicago 25 and Green Bay 12. And this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. We're working together to be the best. By exceptionally smooth Michelob, but to make tonight the best part of your day. By AT&T, AT&T, the right choice. And by the breakfast of champions, Wheaties, what the big boys eat. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.